for that itch. Rarely do I see any American Italians eating in here. But I'm funny how? I mean funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. Vilkorit det att jag får leva. Yes! 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 Puppets, Robert. Puppets having sex and doing other things. Uh, in Anima Lisa, the new stop motion puppet movie. From the mind that brought us being John Malkovich. Eternal Sunshine of the Eternal Spotless Sunshine Mind. And Schenectady, Schenectady, New York. Uh, that would be Charlie Kaufman and his filmmaking partner in this case, Duke Johnson, have brought us uh, what you just described just a second ago as a funky little movie. It is a funky little 90 minute movie that I did not know if I was watching the funniest film of the year or the most tragically sad movie of it's, the year. It's a little of both. I mean, yeah. everything Kaufman touches is going to have some melancholy. In it, and this is absolutely no. It's drenched in it. No exception. Um, I guess we'll talk a little about the story, although it's kind of beside the point. I watched The Revenant just to get a beat after <laughs> watching. <laughs> after watching Animalisa. So this is about a motivational speaker, uh, played voiced by David Thewlis, who I love. I've liked him for years. Yes. Um, who goes to? I'm sorry. Remind me of the city. Cincinnati. Thank you very much, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, for a speaking engagement, and he lives this very lonely existence, we can tell right off, which we see immediately in his hotel room, and he's just desperate for human contact, and he finds some. Right, because he hears everybody's voice to him sounds exactly the same, actor Tom Noonan. Yes. And uh, the woman, all the women have this man's voice, which just takes a few minutes. I don't know if I ever got used to it. Actually. I never got used to it. <laughs> never got used to part it. Part of the funkiness. Part of the funkiness. That and the fact that it's all puppets and the fact that their faces have these cracks in it and he has a dream, he has a, a nightmare in which part of his lower jaw begins to fall off. And he, you, you say that he's desperate for human contact. I guess my question is, um, is he so up his own puppet rear end that uh, he actually hears everybody. I think the thesis is that he hears everybody the same right. because he can't be bothered to distinguish individuals one from the next, even though that is the, the crux of his motivational speech. Until he meets Lisa, who's voiced by mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, who's had a really good year between this and your favorite movie, <laughs> The Hateful Eight. She gets to sing in this one, too. She gets to sing a Cindy Lauper song. She does. And she also sounds, it's weird, she sounds like the young Jennifer Jason Lee, too. It's, it's kind of odd, because she's playing a character who's probably supposed to be much younger than David Julius's character. It's, a, it's a just, there's no way to describe it. I, I know we're playing some clips from it, so people yeah. can kind of see it. And we're going to show a little uh, featurette about how they did some of the puppet well, let's Can we do that, and yeah, then we'll come back and talk about it so people can get a sense of what we're talking about here? Good idea. Let's All take right. a look. This was a very challenging film to make. I wanted it to be emotional and small and realistic. I thought that would be an interesting stop motion animated movie. Everything is so small and detailed and beautiful. That's the thing about stop motion, like every single thing is made. Each animator had a goal of two seconds of animation, which is 48 individual frames of animation per day. You're watching this thing that's been handmade, that's been created by, by people, that's been manipulated by animators. You can see that and you can feel it. So that gives us an idea of how they did some of the grinded out mechanical work that's involved in stop motion, moving everything just a tiny bit, right, it's three years to make. Right, it's like the world's longest episode of Davy and Goliath. Right, and, we, and we've, so we've seen this kind of stuff, of course, Ray Harryhausen and you know, dinosaur movies and um, you know, Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's not Team America, though. I think that's initially what people kind of thought of. Right, that was marionettes. Right. And, uh, and this is a, more of a stop motion. Very human kind of looking. Thing. Very, very human looking and yet very artificial at the same time. They're reminding you that this is, in fact, an artifice. Right, because you, you could have done this live action. Yes, it was a radio play right. originally. There's no way this didn't need to be, you could have gotten away with it live action and still I think in some ways made a lot of the same points and made it feel the same way but you don't have that strange disconnect that you have from watching 
stop motion animation. So I watched this, then it took me, I watched it at home, as I, I'm guessing you did as well. I did um, it, thank God, because <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I had access to uh, the bar. Yes, all kinds of good stuff. Um, it took me about 20, 30 minutes to get into the flow. Yes. But once I did, I was there. I was fully mm -hmm. involved in this very strange universe. Once I get to the sex scene, I was totally into it. <laughs> that's, how these, that's how these things usually work for you. Right. Once I got to the hardcore sex scene, yes. I was really into it. With puppets, Robert. Yeah. With puppets. Well, like, oh, please. Like, I haven't done that in my house, like, once a week. Like, I'm not doing hardcore puppet sex at the house. I would be disappointed if anything else right, well, were the case. That's why I to totally related to this. I hope people find this. I hope people are able to go see it and they're willing to do something different because we don't see a lot of animated or puppeteer kind of films that are dealing with such adult themes. No, look, it's just the saddest movie ever. <laughs> I mean, it's, you said it was funny, too. Well, it's funny because you're just sort of, you watch it with that sort of awkward laugh of thing, knowing <laughs> you're watching something that's not funny, but because it's so strange and because you don't want to be so overwhelmed by the sadness of this guy and his existence and his, um, he's a giant blank space, basically. I mean, and he has a little crack up during his motivational speech right. that just kind of reveals all of the torment and junk that's floating around. Yeah, he, I mean, he he's like all of us. I mean, you, you sit there and you go, I'm broken, I don't work, I'm, you know, this, this is a movie that makes it tangible. I mean, anybody can sit there and sort of talk about, you know, I, I'm lost, I'm disconnected, I'm distraught. But to see it evidenced in this way, to see it made whole and real by these, and you can only do it with the puppets because you get the sort of do things with the human body that you don't get to do in a live action film. It's just, look, I, I think he's made the, I think Charlie Kaufman made, to me at least, my favorite romance of all time. I think Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is one of the greatest sort of hopeful romances of all time. It was my movie of the decade. He's not a hopeless romantic, he's a hopeful romantic. This feels more hopeless. I mean, it's got a, it's got a bit of, I don't want to give it too much away, but there may be hope for him uh, at the end of the film. But but it feels he feels more lost and adrift here. And he's very much akin to Jim Carrey's character in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. They're all seeking something. They're searching for something. There's hopelessness, but there's also this sense of this fleeting magic that even if it can't last, he right. he finds this woman and he finds something within himself when he's with her, even if perhaps it can't last or if it's not sustainable. Um, it, I think it still speaks to, you know, those, those little magical pleasures that we can find sometimes. But I agree, it's a very sad movie. You really, I, it, it just, the first 20 minutes you are sitting there going, ha, it's, it's, God, it's so weird, how do they do this? Like, God, I must go some fortune, must have taken forever. And by the end, you're just going, I'm just, I, it's so sad. It's so, so depressing um, and rewarding at the same time. For a great, unhappy time, watch. It is, I really. Uh, Anna Melissa. You want to hear a really slick segue? I think it might get nominated for an Oscar for Best Animated Film. Well, it's funny. You, this would make a really great double bill with Inside Out. I think these, they're very, in a, in a strange way, deal with very similar themes, um, dealing with emotion or lack thereof. And it's kind of an extraordinary pairing. I think, I think it's fair to say that two of the best films of 2015 were animated. And the, so those will hopefully both get nominated. We will be discussing all of the nominees, Robert. Yeah, I look forward to that. It's our next real genius that'll be up. I, I give you an Oscar one. for that segue. Thank you. I, I would like to thank you mm. for that. Uh, go see Anna Melissa and come talk. Come see us talk. You can talk about the Oscars too, but. Please come see us talk about it. You can leave nasty Oscars. comments under this on YouTube. Yes. Well, you'll do that anyway. Yeah. So we don't have to give I you. I suck. We don't have to give you permission for that. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you soon. I'll go have puppet sex with myself. <laughs>